Normally, watercolor painting requires a lot of planning, but when I'm stuck in a creative rut, I wish I could just skip past the planning part and fast forward to the painting. It's been raining here all week. I haven't been able to go outside much, and I feel uninspired. When I feel this way, I turn to the one technique that first attracted me to watercolor, which is negative painting. I love it because you can start a negative painting without any planning. Today I want to work in my watercolor sketchbook, but not all sketchbooks can handle wet on wet techniques and layering. I recently discovered this watercolor sketchbook with 100% cotton paper, and I'm going to see if it can handle a negative painting. I tore the back off an empty watercolor pad and taped my sketchbook page to it on three sides. On the binding side, I put the tape right over the coils. We'll see how this works. For me, the best thing I can do when I feel uninspired is to get out of my head and just take action. It's a start before you're ready kind of approach. The first step in this style of negative painting is simply to cover the entire page in color. Let loose and get your brush moving. You really can't mess this up. Just enjoy the process and trust you can figure the rest out later. Yesterday, there was sun and there was rain. Beauty in the mountain. And as the light startled our eyes, we let go of disguise. And now, there's something in the now I have this really colorful background to work with, but it's not a painting yet. I still need an idea. The next day I was at my mother-in-law's house when this palm plant caught my attention. I think inspiration finds us when we're not looking for it. I snapped some photos and sketched out my favorite palm frond. Now I just need to transfer my design to my sketchbook. My favorite method for that is using a light box, but that won't work with a page that's taped down and already covered in paint. The next best thing is graphite transfer paper. It's a super easy way to get a drawing down on top of something you've already painted. If you want to try this painting too, you can download my drawing at the link in the video description. The reason I don't like graphite paper is it leaves behind way too much graphite. Not to worry, I use a kneaded eraser to remove the extra graphite. I also like to roll the eraser across the entire page to pick up any leftover graphite. That's much better. Normally I like to do lots of layers for my negative paintings. It creates a cool, layered effect. But you can also do negative painting with just one background layer. It works great for a big page covering shape like this palm leaf. You just have to go extra dark to create good contrast. I'm painting my background with indigo. I squeezed some straight from the tube so I could mix a nice rich dark color. Always mix up lots of color when you're negative painting. You don't want to run out partway through a wash. Then it's easy. You just fill in the background shapes. I was off to a good start. Then I realized this bottom right corner is all one big connected shape. I quickly turned my sketchbook and propped it up on my tape roll. I need a little help from gravity to manage this big wash. It's hard to see with this dark color, but I'm keeping a wet bead along the bottom edge of the paint. Then I'm pulling the paint down between the leaves. Negative painting is a really good way to practice your flat washes around complex shapes. I always get nervous when I start painting large backgrounds like this, 
But once I get going, I find it really relaxing. It doesn't matter what's going on in my head, all I can focus on is the painting. It forces you to be really present in the moment. In a nutshell, that's what I love most about practicing watercolor. Another thing that helps me get past a creative block is trying out new supplies, changing things up. I'm using my new quarter inch dagger brush. It's taken some getting used to, but I love how I can paint really long, thin lines with the tip of it. But if I turn it on its side, I can quickly fill in large areas. It also holds a lot of paint. Never let supplies hold you back. You don't need a dagger brush for negative painting. You just need a brush with a nice point that can also hold a lot of paint. A good quality round brush will work. I wasn't sure taping a sketchbook page down like this would work, but it is. My page is staying really flat. Hopefully I can remove the tape without tearing the paper. I'm running out of paint now, so I'm going to mix up one more batch so I can finish this painting. Turns out one way to get out of a creative rut is to shake up your process and try something unexpected. I think I'm going to start doing a lot more of these sketchbook negative paintings. I'm definitely feeling inspired again. And the clouds are finally starting to lift.